and welcome to my presentation on Nathaniel Bacon. First, I have some background information on this chap called Nathaniel. He was born in Suffolk, England on January 2nd, 1647. He then went on to Cambridge University. Later, Nathaniel Bacon dropped out and moved to Virginia because of a dispute between him and his wife's family. Big surprise there. He was then appointed to the Virginia Governing Council by his cousin-in-law, Sir William Berkeley. But he abused his power and was soon excluded due to his want to expand into native land. This conflicted with Sir William's point of view. He went back to his two large estates, which he purchased with the money his father had given him, still planning to invade. What started Bacon's grudge with the Indians was when his overseer was killed by a hostile tribe. When Berkeley would not give him permission to lead the defenses, he took it into his own hands and led a crusade against the Native Americans. He got others with the desire to drive the Indians out of Virginia. They went to meet the Okachanis and convinced them to capture another tribe's best warriors. When they returned with the captives, Bacon and his men not only killed the captives, but also turned on their allies, the Okachanis, and shot them dead as well. Because of this, Berkeley declared Bacon a rebel and charged him with treason. Even so, when Bacon returned, he was not killed, which is the usual punishment for treason. He was pardoned by Berkeley and sort of set free. Bacon next came to Jamestown, seeking the permission to head the defense against the Indians. Berkeley was forced to give him permission. But later, he stated that his permission was invalid. When Bacon learned of this, he put his fight against the Indians on hold and made his way back to Jamestown. Berkeley and the wealthy inhabitants fled to the eastern shore. These men tried to gather a force to stop Bacon, but Bacon had too many supporters. In September 1676, Bacon and his men set Jamestown on fire. The rebellion promptly came to an end as Bacon died of fever. Sir William Berkeley's take on Bacon's rebellion. It shows how he thought that Bacon was foolish and sickly of how he boasted of killing Indians. Once the rebellion ended, the Indians had their chance. They struck back and killed many, and with no one defending them, they had free rule. This really affected our relationship with them, because as they attacked, we attacked back, and it became a horrible back and forth battle, until nowadays when there was relative peace and not only did the rebellion change the relationship with Native Americans forever, but it also showed that poor whites and blacks could fight together. This frightened the upper class and hastened racial slavery. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this trip back in time as much as I did. I also hope you learned a little something about Nathaniel Bacon and how he changed our relationship with the Native Americans forever and also hastened racial slavery.